So now this is back to the other website, markmore.org, the Stoics and Epicureans. Um, one of the beliefs of the Epicurean is that um, they denied, says denied the, pro the providential control over human affairs. We have free will, that's what they believed in. Gods might exist, but they are too removed from us, which is an opposition to Stoics. Here's another one. So now we believe that, so now we understood that they believed that the gods might exist or gods did exist, and if so, they were too far removed from, from us or from human beings, which is what they believed. And there's another thing on the same webpage, markmore.org, um, it says, um, the Epicureans, I'll read the background about it, and I'm going to read the background. Low willing to pipe, put up in post production the background of the Stoics. But you know, like I said before, you know, reading into it a lot, you know, the show will be a lot longer than you, know, you intended to be. So you can't really get everything in the show, so you probably put certain things in the post production, you know, so brothers could look at it and read it themselves. It says, um, Epicureans, background. These philosophers follow the teachings of Epicurus, 341. Uh, 270 BC of the Athenian colony of Samos. He taught his students in his garden and they had to learn their doctrines by heart. He had more devoted followers and better enemies than any of the early philosophers. No other figure of importance arose from the school, although some of the writings of Lucretius 94 to 55 BC still, still survive. Now, this is one of um, their beliefs, major beliefs. It says, um, Matter is eternal. The world was not created by a deity. And there's a quote, nothing can ever be created by divine power out of nothing, which is opposition to the Stoic philosophy, which is opposition to Yahweh Bashim Yahusha. Because beginning what? The earth was without form and void. You understand? And the most, the most I was just dead by itself in the beginning. So that Epicurean take a, a big hit right there. These guys are basically the house of consciousness in ancient time. If you didn't get it yet. They're the house of consciousness in the ancient world, man. Why do you think Platinum came to GMS? You know? Why did they came to GMS, man? And you might say, oh, well, they went to ISUBK too. Yeah, yeah, we right. They, they, they did go to them. But they didn't deal with them like how GMS deal with them. See, that was supposed to be a so-called debate. Paul, you know, they had a discussion, so to speak. They had a discussion, so to speak. Can't really guys debate, basically the house of consciousness, man. Ancient world house of consciousness, guys. Sai nigga, Polite, Seti, Shaka Amos, Ali Muhammad, Sutek. Professor Larry, all them niggas back then. That's all them niggas back then. You know? And I'm saying niggas back then is here now. Why do you think Palatinum came to the elders of GMS? You know? You might say, oh, well, they went to ISUPK too. Well, they didn't deal with them how the elders of GMS dealt with them, man. That would be a so called debate. Paul, Paul was having a discussion with them guys, man, basically. You know? So, um. This is, um, because he was breaking down to them what Yahweh Bashim Yahshua was about. He was breaking down to them the scriptures. Dumb niggas were just, you know? Niggas ain't real. Most high ain't dealing with them guys. They don't kill them dudes. Here's another webpage, um, um, this says, uh, read that on the last website. Here's another webpage, it's, um, www.csun.edu. It says Epicurean, Epicureanism and Stoicism compared. Since we're dealing with, the, with Stoic, with um, Epicureanism right now, I'm going to go right to the point. It says gods. Gods exist, but now dwell apart from the world. They did not create the world, so should not be, so should not be worse. Gods are self-sufficient and do not need men. Tendency towards atheism and materialism. So we understood that um, they said gods do exist. Some say they say that gods might exist and they believe, believe that they were made out of atoms. And they said that they dwelt apart from the world and did not create the world. Once again, in opposition to what Paul's belief and the Stoic beliefs are. Which once again, these are all niggas. These are all niggas that's a part of the Greek philosophy. They on Mars Hill, right? Ain't 125th Street House of Consciousness, modern day Mars Hill. You can probably put a picture up of all them niggas, man. You probably put a picture, a picture up of them, of them niggas, man, in the video. Here's another web page. It's um IEP. Let's see what that stands for. Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Epicurious. Let's jump down. 
It says arguments for the existence of of, of um atoms and void. I'ma read the first sentence and one and I'ma read um a couple more sentences in the next paragraph. It says arguments for the existence of atoms and void. Epicurus's metaphysics and them guys always talking about metaphysics, right? See metaphysics and the niggas is always talking about metaphysics. You got videos of that dude Phil Valentine talking about that shit. Politing them dudes. They them same niggas back then here now. Epicurus's metaphysics starts with two simple points. But look at the word metaphysics, man. It says metaphysical of relating to or based on metaphysics. Or of or relating to things that are thought to exist but what cannot be seen. Um That's basically what we need. That was from MerriamWebster.com. Any other definition, Lil Willie put up in post-production. It'll be put up there, Lil Willie. It says, Epicurus is back in www.iep.utm.edu. Epicurus's um, metaphysics starts with two simple points. Starts with two simple points. We see that there are bodies in motion and two, nothing comes into existence from what does not exist. Mr. Most High, Yahweh, Bashan, he exists. Yahweh, he exists. So all things came from him. He was always, he always existed. It says, B, properties of atoms, limitless of the universe. Because Epicurus is believe, Epicurus believes that nothing comes into existence from nothing, he thinks that the universe has no beginning, but has always existed and will always exist. All right? But everything began with the Most High, Yahweh, Bashan, Because the Most High is always existing. And um, that's what we really need on that aspect. You basically, you basically get the gist of it that they believe that the gods were far removed from us, as opposed to I still believe that God dwelled in. I still believe mm -hmm. that God, um, that that what they believe that God created all things, and how the Epicurean believe that what they call gods did not create anything, because they said that nothing can come into existence out of nothing. There's another web page. It says www.biblicaltraining.org. It says theory of ideas nine. From the same premises, one would expect the complete denial of any divine beings, but it is a curiosity of oh, divine beings. Like Psalm 14 and 1. Psalm chapter 14 verse 1. It says, um, to the chief musician of Psalm of David, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are, there is no most high. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that do of good. So I was Epicurean. I was polite and steady. And all them guys back then, here again today. It says, um, but it is a curiosity of the system that a grossly materialistic theory of knowledge should require the affirmation of the existence of the gods. Men's ideas are derived from the thin material films that pass from the subject around, uh, objects around them into the kindred matter of their minds. It follows that every idea must have been produced by a corresponding object. Men generally possess ideas of God, therefore God must exist to, to produce those ideas which come to men in sleep and dreams, but they are not such gods as men generally believe to exist. They are constituted of the same atomic matter as men, but of a finer texture, and all a bunch of bullshit. So basically, you know, what they, what, um, they had, had their theories of, uh, of um, what they felt God was, the Epicureans. This is www.biblicalchain.org Epicureans. And it said, men generally possess ideas of God, therefore God must exist to produce those ideas. So he's saying, men have ideas of gods, therefore God must exist in order for men to produce those ideas. But they're saying, they ain't gods as men generally believe existed because these gods are made of the same atomic matter as men and all this other bullshit. They all bug the fuck out. Just like polite them guys. In fact, when you go up in the beginning of the page, so as you can understand, you know the you know the Epicureans, you know the Epicureans, <laughs> they ain't gonna get it, man. When you read it, it says, I'm gonna jump right down to the bottom of, of this of this first paragraph. It just right to the point. It says, Paul met. It says, um, speaking of Epicure, Epicureanism, it says it was widely held at the time of of um, his Christ here. It says, Paul met it at Athens 
when he accounted the philosophers of that city, and it gives you Acts 17, and it says, they were not impressed by his teaching of creation, judgment, resurrection, so on and so forth. You know? Since all these doctrines were denied by the Epicurean philosophy. And as we can clearly see, you understand that they wasn't going to get it. You can already see that. They wasn't going to understand creation. They didn't understand judgment because they didn't believe in faith. But, we're going to get into that in further, you know, further shows. So now, we basically broke down the whole thing based upon the first part of the scripture when it said, um, we go back, when it said, um, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth. I'm sorry, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth. Let's go into that. Seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth. Which you know, the, the, uh, the story believed that it was Zeus, the Epicurean, believed that the God was too far from man and to be even be a, even care about what the hell man was doing. So it says, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth. Let's get a scripture on that. This is a book of um, so, um, Psalms. The 146th chapter. In the 5th verse it says, um, Happy is he that hath the power of Jacob for his hope, whose hope is in his Lord, his power, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all therein, is which keepeth truth forever. See, that's what I'm wanting. Um, you know, that was one. So it says, which made heaven and earth. It says, Happy is he that hath the power of Jacob for his hope, whose hope is in his Lord, his power, which made heaven and earth. That's why Apostle Paul said in Acts 17, um, it said what? He is Lord of heaven and earth. Same thing in Psalm 146, verse 5 and 6. So, we got that part. And let's do it with, um, another part of this uh, verse here, the last part. It says, The Most High that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. Well, we know that the Heavenly Father dwells not in temples made with hands. Let's see if you got scriptures to prove that. Acts chapter 7 verse 48, this is Stephen speaking. And it says, um, right to the point, How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Okay, Let's see if you got another scripture on that. This is, um, 1 Kings. Which there's a lot more scriptures we can go to in regards to this aspect. But we're going to do it right, right, right to the point. 1 Kings 8 and 27. But will the Most High indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of the heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built it? How much less this house that I have built it? So once again, we know that the Heavenly Father dwells not in temples made with hands. 